Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is chapter 139 of Gains, and this one is titled, He's Around to Help. After finishing up that conversation, you went to your room, changed, and then headed to the staff room, hoping to catch Aizawa there to get the cushion from his car. Oh, you said with surprise, when you knocked on the slightly ajar office door and peeked in. Everyone was there. Aizawa, present Mike, and Midnight were all having a chat, and you almost felt like you were intruding on something you shouldn't have been, the way they all looked up and paused when they saw you at the door. Um, I'm sorry, um, excuse me, sir, you said, addressing Aizawa. Yesterday we accidentally left mum's cushion in your boot. Would it be okay if I came and got it and took it to her today? Come on in, Yin, Midnight said kindly. No need to stay at the door. Oh, thank you, he said, sliding the door open a little wider to step in. How's interning with fat gum going? She asked you as you walked over. Oh, very well. I've been on patrol with both Karishma and Bakugo as well, and I think we all have the hang of it by now, he said proudly. Ah, she said with a small smirk. So things with you and Bakugo are going well then? Yes, he replied curiously. Oh, I only mentioned it because of the incident with you and him before, but I'm glad you're on good terms, she said with a knowing smile. Yeah, we've always been on good terms. He didn't mean to harm me. That was an accident, but it's been the catalyst for a number of good things for me, so I'm grateful actually, he said with a smile. Good to hear, she said. And Bakugo and Karishma have been getting along? Oh yes, very well, he said with a small smirk, but then you hit it. I don't know why they wouldn't be. Oh, just asking, she replied, pushing her glasses up on her nose a little. That's all. He gave her a little bit of a suspicious look, and then Aizawa interjected. Right, well, now that you've completely derailed the conversation, Numeri, yes, Yin, I'll come with you now and open the car so you can get the cushion. I haven't even looked in the boot since yesterday, so I'm sorry I didn't see it sooner, he said, turning and walking to his desk to get his car keys, and then heading out the door with you in tow. What was that all about? President Mike asked Midnight as soon as you and Aizawa had disappeared. What? she asked innocently. That was an interrogation on line one, he said with an exaggerated hand movement. Oh, come now. You can't tell me there's nothing going on with her and back ago. But now I'm suspicious that Krishma is involved as well, she said, checking her nails as she spoke. What? What makes you say that? President Mike yelped. And are you saying that there's more than just a friendly camaraderie going on between these three? That's exactly what I'm saying, she replied with a glint in her eye. And I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Down at the car, you were successfully retrieving the cushion and thanking Aizawa at the same time. Oh, good, it's here, he said as you lifted it out of the boot. Thank you, sir. I'll be going now. He nodded. Be safe, Yin, he said before closing his boot, and you parted ways. You headed for the school gates and then off down the road towards the bus stop to head to the retreat. You had just stopped at the shelter there when you heard a familiar voice call your name. Yin, good to see you again! You looked to your left and saw a fat gum waving at you. Oh, hi, fat gum. What brings you to this side of town? You asked with a smile. I was visiting a friend, he said. Are you heading somewhere? Yes, I'm going to see my mum, actually. I have a favourite cushion, so I was going to drop it to her, you said, pointed to the cushion tucked under your arm. Oh, would you like me to accompany you? I would like to keep you safe, and I'd also like to give some words of cheer to your mother, too, he said with a grin. Really? That would be so amazing. She could really do with some cheering up right now. She got some sad news yesterday, and I don't know how else to bring a smile to her face. So if she could meet you again, that would be awesome, he said, talking non-stop now. I was also meant to pass on her thanks to your first message to her, but I kept forgetting to do that. At least if you came to see her, she could thank you in person. It's no trouble at all, he said, placing hands on hips and grinning. This is a hero's duty. I'm happy to come along. That's really good of you, he said with another smile. I really appreciate it. No problem, he said putting his hand up to request the bus to stop for you both. Legend has it that you are still thinking about how on earth he fit in that bus that night, heading to your mum's retreat, but somehow he managed to squeeze in and then pop out once you got to the stop, and then you were walking the hallway to her room. Oh, this is going to be so awesome. You gushed internally as you stopped at her door and knocked. Um, just wait for a second, I'll see if she's ready, you said to him. Mum? You called as you opened the door. You in here? Yin, honey, is that you? She called back. Come in, sweets, I'm just in the bathroom. Oh, how embarrassing, you thought, turning to fat gum. Um, just give us two minutes and then knock on the door, okay? You whispered as you slipped inside the room, leaving him outside. Got it, he whispered back with a thumbs up. 
You slipped inside and waited for your mum to come out of the bathroom and then you exchanged pleasantries and handed her her cushion. It was while she was thanking you that there was a knock on the door. Oh, I wonder who that is. You might want to get the door, mum, you said mysteriously. Oh, she asked, looking at you and catching the look in your eye. What are you up to, my cheeky girl? You have a look in your eye. Go and answer the door, mum, you encouraged her. She slowly walked to the door and opened it and nearly fell over. Oh, mercy, she gasped. Heavens, fuck em. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Lynn. Do excuse me. I thought I'd drop by to greet you as well to, as to encourage you and tell you you have a wonderful daughter, he said, giving her a very wide smile. Your poor mum was speechless and couldn't do much more than just grasp her chest and make small sounds of disbelief. Surprise, mum, he said brightly. Oh, my honey bun, did you organise this? She gasped, turning to look at you. Oh, well, it was a little impromptu, but Fatgum offered to come with me tonight to see you, you said. Come in, Fatgum, come and have a seat. He nodded and politely stepped in. Your poor mum was still speechless and just stood there staring. We love mum. She deserves it. Stay tuned for chapter 140 coming tomorrow. See you then.